the worst <coughs> professional amputee in Calgary. <laughs> and she also likes turtles. Please welcome the dean. So as we all know, the greater than less than symbol is used when comparing two different integers. Using perspective as to which way we look at it, we judge what is greater or less. I think anyone looking into my life might get the opinion that I'm living with less given my physical appearance, but I couldn't disagree more. My mom was six months pregnant with me when she found out there were complications. Feeling like everything would turn out the way it should, she declined further tests to pinpoint what exactly was wrong. She even remembers having a vivid dream where um, she was reassured everything was going to be fine, I guess. Um, August 20th, 1993, I was born missing part of my left arm, two fingers on my right hand, and I was sporting a set of haggard feet. With the future looking like it would be spent in a wheelchair, my parents opted to have the feet amputated, allowing me to wear prosthetics more comfortably. And I'm so glad they did because I think feet are disgusting. They provided my parents with information on different adaptations and provided me somewhere to hang out with a lot of different multiple amputees of different ages. Um, I think it was a huge comfort for my parents to be able to see young adults, kids, full adults living successful lives the way they were. And it was definitely beneficial for me because I got to hang out with so many cool people that I've grown amazing friendships with. And they also showed me through the different adaptations that you could participate in regular sports and activities. So it definitely inspired me to do the same. Um, when I was young, I kept my prosthetics fairly minimal. I never picked up wearing an arm because it just got in the way. And like I said, feet are gross. So I chose not to wear my prosthetic feet until I decided that shoes were cool. <laughs> I, I chose to wear my little booties that were just basically like little hoops, but I motored in them. <laughs> As a child, I was painfully shy. My older brother and sister sisters would constantly ask, answer questions for me, directed to me, even if it was a simple breakfast question of waffles or pancakes. <laughs> When I was in public, I would hide behind family members because I had the idea in my mind that if no one could see me, then I was safe. When I began school, I came out of my turtle shell, if you will, making lots of friends and becoming a more visible member of my community. I started playing soccer, which boosted my confidence even more, seeing that I was a valuable member to the team. This all led to me finding a new kind of team, a team of actors. When I hit junior high, I was participating in drama, dance, and visual art. I discovered quickly that drama was the biggest passion of the three, um, despite my humble face hiding beginnings. My junior high acting career bloomed with the lead role of the mustachioed mayor of Munchkinland in Music of Oz. <laughs> Flash forward to high school, where I engage in full-on drama culture. I'm talking musical theater, puppetry, which proves to be slightly difficult with one puppet hand, <laughs> and all the other acting fundamentals. I scored roles such as Tiny Tom from Urin Town, the gender-fluid Bama Tobois from Les Mis, and Hava from Fiddler, some real Oscar-winning roles. <laughs> so there I was, a fresh 17-year-old high school graduate, ready to take on the world, Except there was one problem. I had no idea what it was that I wanted to do. So I set out, you know. My sister went the route of the university. My brother went the route to the parents' basement. <laughs> I was on the experience, I found myself hitting the pavement with one handful of resumes, because that's all I could hold. A lot of businesses did reject me without asking what my limitations were. But I tried to stay positive, and it did prove me right when I procured employment at the local post office. They let me prove myself as a valuable employee. The time came where I decided I needed to get my driver's license. I wanted to hit the open road without hearing my dad yell, stop, slow down, brake, pedestrian. <laughs> so I enrolled in driver's ed, my first hack at post-secondary. After 
hours of classroom experience, I was ready to be in the car. The instructor was initially apprehensive when he saw that I'd just be driving with one arm. I failed to inform him that I also wore two prosthetic legs, and he never did catch on to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I for my road test, and I passed with flying colors. Getting my license with zero limitations was definitely a huge success. Shortly after the test, I welcomed a used addition to the family, Wanda, a reliable 2001 dog to me <laughs> This finally gave me the freedom to find a new job outside of the community and allowed me to start meeting new people in a new setting instead of staying in my little bubble. Coming into my home, I started modifying my physical appearance. I found my love for tattoos very quickly and they started to grow a collection. This made me feel more confident being able to express myself through the body on my, or through the art on my body. I started trying to think of ways to customize my prosthetic legs to match the rest of me. So that's when my prosthetist introduced me to Macaulay, co-founder of the design studio VLLs. Um, Macaulay and her partner Ryan designed unique covers for prosthetic legs, now arms as well. Um, we put like three peas in a pod, really, and we start collaborating, collaborating on my first cover you see here, which we named the home. Um, things took off for me after that. It began with a fun photo shoot to showcase these new pieces. Macaulay even designed two dresses that matched the design on the covers. I was definitely excited to enter a new world where prosthetics were looked at in a new light. And being able to accessorize a set of legs was something I'd never experienced before and I was really excited to go into. I had the opportunity to walk multiple runways in wearable tech fashion shows in Calgary, San Francisco, and Shenzhen, China. I was honored to be part of a movement that is impacting amputees and pretty much everyone globally. It's amazing to be able to change the limitation, limitations one expects of any amputee. So my whole life, I've been answering questions about how I get by with less. But tonight I ask all of you, am I really living with less? I think in my case, less is more. 